Do you intend to lie to me in any way during this polygraph test? No. It seemed very real, just as real as my being here, conscious, talking right now. Do you claim to have been abducted by alien beings? Yes. It was very difficult for me to accept the reality of it. I tried to explain it away as a dream. Are you lying about being gynecologically examined by aliens in a spacecraft? No. I said to myself, you know, how, how could aliens get into my house? All of the doors and windows were locked. But it seemed so real that I had to go and check every door and window and convince myself that they were all locked. Are you afraid that you might fail this polygraph test? Yes. The polygraph exam is extremely nerve-wracking and stressful to take the exam because one doesn't know how accurately a machine reads the material. You know, it's like, I know I'm telling the truth, but how can a machine tell whether I'm telling the truth or not? Tell me how she now did on the test. Did she pass or fail? It showed that she was deceptive, and uh, not only is it my opinion that she was strongly deceptive, but uh, there's a program in the computer here that was uh, uh, done by Johns Hopkins University. And I scored the uh, charts on that, and it says deception strongly indicated the probability of deception being greater than 0.99. So that's uh, almost certain. No doubt in your mind that she was, she was trying to deceive us? No doubt in my mind. There's no, there's not even an element that she believes it, but it may not have happened to her. No, she, if she believed it, it would show that she was telling the truth. But it shows here that she does not believe it, and she knows that this is, did not occur. Certainly in some cases where individuals have reported full-blown abduction experiences, independent witnesses who were present in the room with them at the time reported that physically they had not left the room. In other words, the entire experience was taking place inside their own heads. Now, if we know that that can happen in some cases, I think the burden of proof is then on those who are making the stronger claims that people really are being taken aboard flying saucers to show that that's not what's happening in all of the cases. Whilst the vast majority of abduction reports come from the United States, it is in fact a worldwide phenomena with thousands of cases being reported in the United Kingdom alone. The man who was responsible for investigating these reports on behalf of the UK government was Nick Pope. Whilst it's true to say that uh, other people within various governments have conducted official research into UFOs, which has mirrored the work that I did at the Ministry, to the best of my knowledge, I am the only person in the world ever to have conducted official research and investigation into the alien abduction phenomenon. Some people said to me when I was at the Ministry, why are you wasting time looking into alien abductions? I said, as long as people report these experiences to me, I have a duty to take their claims seriously. Some of these people were phoning up in a great state of distress. What was I supposed to do? Hang up on them? <laughs> Another one. one of his cases was Peter and Diane Shepherd, who saw a large, brightly lit UFO outside their house in the country. There in front of us, across the road, um, the main road, were the most amazing lights in the sky to our left. There were quite a number of them, and they were actually coming from our left crossing over the road and then they were coming in front of us and going to the right. This was a, a field length away by the way. These lights were treetop height but around the red was like a halo effect of flashing, sparkling, brilliant white flashes were going off. So there you go, you see it. 
We were all stunned, obviously, by stunned. what we were seeing. I mean, yeah, our reality was completely shattered. This was something that wasn't supposed to happen. How can something, you know, <laughs> how could this be? This is, I mean, it's a shattering experience. You can't believe it. Um, I was excited, a little bit afraid, a little bit uneasy because of the size of this thing. It was awesome. The basic experience itself, I, I wouldn't dispute, often did seem to that person to take place the way they describe it. The question is how we interpret what happened. Did they just have some kind of very rich and complex hallucination that, that that's what was happening? There you go, there's a reference point. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> UFO, another one. Another bizarre case was Anne and Paul Andrews, whose son, Jason, was repeatedly visited by a UFO throughout his childhood. On each occasion, their house would begin to shake wildly. A bright light would come through the doors and windows, and Jason would make his way to the front door and out into their garden. He would disappear for hours on end. I mean, the, the initial reaction is, is absolute terror. You know, you, you, you sort of, you know, you're running around like a headless chicken. Um, you know, you don't know whether to phone the police or, or, or what to do. You know, you, you're just sort of standing there, you know, um, just sort of screaming at each other. Um, you know, the, the second reaction is um, anger, you know, real anger that, you know, this can happen. Um, you know, why, why can you not do anything about it? It's like when, when Jason was, was younger, um, you know, he, he would come to us and say, um, you know, I hate them for taking me, but I hate you for not stopping them. Um, you know, you, you, you feel very angry, um, you feel very frustrated, um, you know, and you also feel very, very upset that this is going on sort of in your own home, in, in your own house, where you're supposed to protect your children and keep them safe. Um, you can't do anything about it. Some people have speculated that we're dealing, uh, when we talk about the greys, with uh, what humans one day evolve into. And it's been suggested that we're dealing with people uh, from the future coming back through time uh, to take genetic material, perhaps to revitalise the human race. He told us that was what was happening to him. I mean, he told us for years that he was being taken away um, by little men, you know. And it, I mean, this was when he was sort of four or, or five, you know. He was saying, well, these little men come into my room and they make me go away with them. You know, of course, we're saying, well, nobody can get in, you know, the doors are locked. Um, you know, mummy and daddy are here to protect you, you know, all, all the usual thing that parents say. Um, so, I mean, it was him that was insisting to us that this is what was going on. You know, I like to know why. And if I could, I'll stop it. At the end of the day, my best assessment, and because this is a view I formed at the Ministry, I guess you could call it an official assessment, is that yes, we are dealing with extraterrestrials, and yes, the alien abduction phenomenon is real in a physical sense. So what is going on? Are thousands of people really being abducted against their will by aliens? Are sinister experiments being carried out on the human race in spacecraft? Perhaps the most unique take on the phenomena is from the British scientist Albert Budden, who spent years researching the idea that alien abductions aren't real physical events, but are severe mental reactions caused by exposure to high levels of electromagnetic energy. Interestingly, only a very small percentage of people are sensitive enough to be affected by this phenomena, which causes the victim to produce vivid and entirely lifelike hallucinations. All these abductees or experiencers are actually uh, suffering from, they've developed a condition called electrical hypersensitivity. And this long word means that they are hypersensitive to the invisible electromagnetic energies in the environment. And they're living in 